So now we're in quarter two. We're going to make our transition from chemical reactions to how cells and how we use energy and give off energy and energy transfers. So we're going to start with the chemistry side of it. Um, in chemistry, there can be two kinds of reactions. There can be endothermic reactions and exothermic reactions. In endothermic reaction, heat or energy goes into the reaction. So in other words, you have the reactants plus some energy to get the reaction started, yielding the products. This energy is often in the form of heat or heat energy. So remember when we did that big scary chemistry lab and you had to heat up the chemicals for the reaction to take place? That would be an endothermic reaction. You're putting energy in. Um, in an exothermic reaction, it's just the opposite. Um, heat is going to be an additional product of the reaction or energy is going to be an additional product of the reaction. So in other words, your reactants give you a product plus some energy. And again, it's often in the form of heat. So energy and heat are used pretty interchangeably here. That's probably my fault. Um, so energy is vital to the world we live in. Um, all living things need energy to live. Some organisms get that energy from photosynthesis, which we looked at um, on Thursday. We will, anyways. Um, so these are called autotrophs. The prefix auto means self. So they make their energy themselves or they make their food themselves. Autotrophs can transform sunlight to make food, and this process is called photosynthesis. Um, you should have seen this word before a bunch of times. Um, photosynthesis, in photosynthesis, um, plants take carbon dioxide and water and light, that's their energy that they're putting in, endothermic, um, to yield glucose and oxygen. And the equation's right here, and I'm sorry I couldn't get the subscripts to pop down, um, but you have, you've written this already at this point. So photosynthesis is an endothermic reaction because you put energy in, the light, for the reaction to work. Photosynthesis is the basis for 99% of all life-supporting energy. Just wrap your mind around that. So almost all our energy originally comes from photosynthesis, which is from plants. Okay, so back to autotrophs. So plant algae, plants, algae, and some bacteria are autotrophs. Um, autotrophs make food to support their own lives, but also su to support life for other groups of organisms. There's other groups of organisms we'll learn about in a little bit. These are the organisms that get energy from food. I guess not in a little bit. I guess it's right now. And these are called heterotrophs. You should already know that the prefix hetero means different, like heterogeneous mixtures. So heterotrophs can't make their own food, so they eat to get energy. He like they eat other things. Other. Hetero. Different. Eat different things. Um, heterotrophs consume other heterotrophs or autotrophs or organic molecules. All animals are heterotrophs, so are some protists and bacteria. So, if you can't perform photosynthesis and you still need to get energy, um, you're going to do a process called cellular respiration. So when organisms need to eat to live, their cells perform cellular respiration to break down foods into energy. So um, we take glucose and oxygen, which remember are the products of photosynthesis, and we can break them apart into carbon dioxide, water, oops, I should have should have written those the other way because carbon. And then, why are you getting stuck? It's an exothermic reaction because you get energy out. And the energy that comes out comes out in the form of ATP, um, but we'll learn more about that later, and you'll learn a lot more about it in high school. Um, so for right now, what you need to know about cellular respiration, whoops, this is going crazy. This is the worst one I've ever done. Okay, um, so what you need to know is there's two kinds of chemical reactions, endothermic and exothermic. You put heat in or energy in and you get energy out. In photosynthesis, you put light energy in. In cellular respiration, you get energy out in the form of ATP. And we'll learn more about all this over the next two weeks. Um, thank you.